everyone, my name is Katie Carson and I am the Duchess of Suds at this channel and I met someone really cool at VidCon. You guys, oh, here she is. <laughs> I made Christine again and I hear you make soap. I do. With hollow. That's right. I, with hollow. I would like to wash myself in that. That's right. It's just for you, Christine. That's right. It's Christine, the hollow queen. Christine has a nail art channel that she makes lots of really cool designs. She does kids kits. It's a lot of fun over there. There. and she recently just launched her very own nail polish collection. It's 100% sold out online. You can't get your hands on it. The only people who could buy it were the people who went to VidCon and visited her booth. So I got two of them. I got one for me so that I could wear it on my own fingers and just revel in its hollow glory. And I picked up one for you guys. It's vegan, it's cruelty free, it's made in New York City, and it comes with five nail polishes. Look at the hollow on the inside. Her packaging is just two of these items are an opaque polish and then three of them are hollow tacos or hollow top coats. They make a beautiful iridescent sparkly shimmer in the sunshine. They are so gorgeous. They last forever. I've actually had these on my nails for almost four days now. They're only chipping a little bit and I am so hard on my nails. All you have to do to enter to win is subscribe to the channel and leave a comment down below. None of this follow me on Instagram, do a million bazillion things to be entered so you get one entry. None of that, just subscribe and comment and you're entered. And the winner will receive this Hollow Taco collection and they will also receive a bar of the soap that I make today inspired by Christine. So without further ado, let's make some soap. So my brother Kenneth <laughs> decided to put my lye water in this stainless steel cup and I don't remember where Caleb got this, but this is definitely his cup and we definitely stole it. Hey, whatever works. So for those of y'all who've never watched a cold process soap making tutorial or video, this is the traditional method of making soap, what you call lye soap. Anytime you're watching a video where someone is melting down a soap base, adding color and stuff and then re-pouring it, that's traditionally called glycerin soap or melt and pour soap. They're not actually making the chemical bond of a soap. They're really just reheating soap that's already been made. So to make it, you gotta have a hydroxide. You have to be very careful with it. That's why I have gloves on because it is quite dangerous. This is what is found in drain cleaners. It eats up stuff typically. <laughs> on the pH scale, it's a 14. So it's very, very alkali. It's a base. And then in here, we have five different types of oils. We have olive oil, we have coconut oil, we have palm oil, and the palm oil I use is RSPO certified, so it does not contribute to deforestation and it is also organic. We have sweet almond oil and we have just a little bit of castor oil. They're both sitting now at room temperature, so I'm going to begin by pouring this into the oils. You always want to pour your lye water solution into the oils and not the other way around. And then slightly less traditional, I will be mixing this with a stick blender. Back in the olden days, when people made lye soap out of the tallow and the animal fats that they had sitting around having rendered since they wasted nothing, they would mix it by hand and sometimes it took hours and well, we don't have hours so we're gonna blend it up with this immersion blender that we got from Amazon. I'll leave you guys a link down below. Now we're gonna have five colors in the soap. So I have here five different pouring containers. I got uh, one of these from Walmart and the rest of these little guys from Amazon. And now I'm going to evenly distribute the soap into these containers. Kenneth, they're not big enough. Kenneth? Okay. I still have this much left. Another container mode. But I had only planned for five colors. More <laughs> colors. Oh no. It's not enough. Oh my gosh. <laughs> you put more in there? Uh, barely. Otherwise, when I put my stick blender in to mix it, it'll fall out. Goodness, girl. You did not plan this. That's literally what I said at the beginning of the video. I did not plan this. Well, here's another one for you. For my, car, my, my crappy planning. <laughs> uh, I was gonna say for your ratchet butt, for your ratchet soap talk. <laughs> where you're like, 
Back in the olden days, they used to make soap using tallow. And then you can't even get enough containers for it. <laughs> we don't have time for that. We don't even have time to countermeasure. <laughs> what I do have time for is bossing you around. Well, I don't know where we're gonna end up, but I do know where we're gonna start. And that is by moving all these things out of the way. The first color I would like to do is purple. And I will leave all the colors I am using today down in the description box below in case you would like to use them in your own creations, be them epoxy creations, like uh, resin creations, or bath bombs, or soap, or mineral makeup, you name it. Let's blend this in. I just poured in the fragrance oil. We're using Icy Shine today from Nature's Garden. It's a gorgeous fragrance oil. And to each one of the colors, I'm gonna be adding just a little bit of Sparkle Me Plenty. This is from Mad Micah's. Just gonna blend that in by hand. And this is what is going to create just a little bit of shimmer inside the soap itself. Now you can't put hollow inside the soap, but this little bit of mica is definitely going to show up. It's kind of what it's for, is to add a little bit of shimmer shimmer to your cold process soap. All right, and now that that's mixed in, let's pour it into our molds after this quick commercial break. These two soap loaves are on an incline, as you can probably see. And that is because we're gonna create a diagonal design today. So I'm gonna pour two stripes in, just like that. Come over here, do the same over here. One stripe down, one stripe back. And I'm gonna pour another stripe down over here, another stripe down over here. Maybe we'll come back real quick on this one. This is just to get them relatively even on both loaves. And now that all the purple is in, I'm gonna go ahead and mix up the next layer and we're gonna flip these molds to the other side so it creates a diagonal line on the opposite side of the mold. Okay, it's time to pour the next layer. So I'm gonna take this one down and I'm gonna flip it. And you do have to make sure that your soap is basically 100% set up if you're gonna do it like this. It's a very sharp incline, but the next color is gonna be this yellow right here. Honestly, when I picked these colors, I'm not going to lie, I didn't really have a color palette. I just had a bunch of colors I thought looked good. Got a scrapey scrapey out my little containy. All right, cool. Next layer. Okay, next color is this fuchsia, and I am going to help it break the fall. Um, by putting my spatula here, just because I don't want it to puncture that purple. Those first two layers are always the easiest ones to pour. And I'm gently going to wiggle this around, make it even all the way down. Okay, got in as much as I could. So once again, just trying to pat this down, make it as flat and even as possible. Okay, all the pink is in, so it's time for the next color. Y'all, look at this color. So this particular mica is called Tahitian Teal. It's from Mad Micas, and it's already kind of shiny anyway, but you add in that extra snowflake sparkle, and it's just the bee's knees. By the way, I have been getting a lot of comments about mica and the mica we use and mica mining and sustainability and stuff. So a lot of the micas we use are synthetically created in a lab. They're not not even mined. And the rest of them are ethically sourced. So you can feel good about purchasing royalty soaps because we're only using micas that are ethical and or man-made. All right, time to flip this on its side again. I'll probably have to stand in a different place this time. Fair warning, the camera may turn off during this pour because it's giving me a little warning sign right now, but it's too late. I must keep moving. Gonna pour down this side as well. And once I get that first layer on, I'm not even using it to break the fall anymore because it's completely set up down there. 
Okay, let's smooth this layer out all the way down. I can clean up any little messy drips that happen, don't worry. Woo! The camera didn't die! It lasted! Yippee! Okay, I'm gonna change the uh, battery pack and we're gonna come back for the next layer. Now since I'm sort of flying by the seat of my pants here, I've decided that after doing four diagonal layers, the last three are gonna be straight on top to add a little bit of a contrast, make it even more interesting. So the next color we have to do is orange and I'm just gonna put that right on top. Don't even have to break the fall because I know that they are plenty thick to hold it. And again, for those of y'all who have maybe never watched cold process soap making, it continues to get thicker as you work with it. I've been working with this soap for a very long time now. Certain recipes thicken faster than other recipes and certain fragrance oils also sort of thicken your batter. I'm actually working with a fragrance oil today that thickens it significantly because I wanted to be able to do all of the layers with one soap batch and it's really really hard to do that unless you have a fragrance oil that will make your layers set up quickly this is getting significantly harder to do the longer I go on but I'm just tapping it down completely and then I'm kind of smooshing it up onto the side of the green and once again, I'll clean up my molds after each layer so that none of them get messed up. Gonna wipe up these edges, so satisfying. And the orange didn't quite reach the edge over on this side, but it's not a big deal. I'm not gonna worry about it. All right, I'm gonna mix up the next layer. The next layer I put on was pink. And while I was putting it on, I was like, dude, I have one more layer and I don't know what I'm gonna do for it. I was looking through all my colors and I'm like, I'm just not pleased with any of them. But I figured it out, y'all. I figured it out. Black. We should do black on top so that hollow really stands out. Okay, so technically this isn't black. Technically this is dark gray, but I didn't want to mix up black oxide. I didn't think that that would go very well with what we were trying to do here. I really wanted to use a mica, so I ended up using a black mica instead, which is never going to get like a black, black color with the soap recipe that I'm using. It's just gonna end up being, like I said, a very dark gray, which will probably match the colors a little better anyway. I've scrapey scrapied all I can out of that containing, and I'm just gonna smooth this out over the top, make sure it gets to the very edge of the soap mold. I can't wait to texture the top and do the hollow because let me tell you guys, the members of the royal court have been asking for a complete glitter hollow top with nothing else on it for such a long time. This is the perfect soap to do it on. And I am gonna add, like I said, a little bit of texture on top, not only because it looks, well, a little better most of the time, but also because that will help the hollow shine in a special way to have a little bit of curvature on the top of the soap. All right, so let me scrapey scrapey the teeny tiny bit out of my container that's left. I'm gonna bang those down. The top has set up enough so that I can give it a little bit of texture. I'm just gonna come all the way down. I'm not gonna like do a big thing really, just slight texturing. Come over here, do the same thing. Just kinda touch the top. Might make this one slightly different than the other one. Ooh, aren't we rebellious? Okay. Time to hollow. Now the first type of hollow I'm gonna put on is this holographic silver glitter, the eco-friendly kind. This is from Crafter's Choice. This is a more fine hollow glitter. Brambleberry has a fine hollow glitter. Obviously Wholesale Supplies Plus, which is Crafter's Choice has a fine glitter. This is just the one that I have in my studio right now, so this is the one I'm using. And this is just to give the hollow a base, like I said, to sit on. The goal, of course, is to get the entire top completely coated in hollow. 
I don't want to see very much black at all. Also, I didn't even think about it, but now these are really going to match my fingernails. Look at the spoon. Ooh. And now I'm going to take some large hollow glitter. You can see that in the camera really well. This is from Brambleberry, and it's really big glitter hex. So it's going to sit right on top of that other glitter. And I am just going to put a ton ton of this. We bought this glitter because I use it so often. We bought like a pound of it, I think, and it is really, really whack to see a pound of hollow glitter. I can tell you that. Now, obviously there's going to be a few little spots that don't have it on it because I did texture the top. It's not completely flat. So those very tips of the edges might not have like a whole piece sticking to it. But besides that, it's going to be completely covered. It looks kind of like a CD right now. This is everything I ever wanted to do to the top of a soap. Oh yes. Oh my gosh. <laughs> this is the best day of my life. Okay, so let's spritz the top with rubbing alcohol and then I'm going to leave it as is. I'm not going to dump off any extra glitter right now because I want as much to stick to the top of this soap as humanly possible. We'll knock all the extra off tomorrow morning. Look at the shimmer when I spritz it with rubbing alcohol. Ooh. All right, cool. I'm going to let those sit and bring you guys in for a close up. Holy moly. <laughs> Look at the glitter, the whole thing doused in glitter. If you don't like glitter, this ain't the soap for you, sis. So I am gonna let this sit for 18 to 24 hours and then I'm gonna come back and we are gonna chop these up and take a peep at the inside after this quick commercial break. Guys, we are back. The hollow soap has been unmolded. And before I cut this, I want to show you guys what I did. I took the two loaves outside into the sunshine because that is where the hollow is the most spectacular. And I happened to get a shot of when the clouds were covering the sun and then the sun poked through them. And the transformation of the glitter is just simply stunning. Also, also, please peep the nail polish because Christine nailed the linear hollow. It is so beautiful, especially on top of a black nail polish. I'm literally obsessed. So I'm going to turn this soap on its side. That way the glitter doesn't drag against my cutter. I'm using Kermit today and I'm just going to press down and you can probably already see the glitter in those first four layers. Man, he sounded angry about that. <laughs> I'm gonna slide one out of the middle here. Break that up a little bit. And this is what it looks like on the inside. So we've got kind of this cool herringbone effect. I'm totally digging it. Does this remind anyone of like an 80s party? My mom said this is like all the 80s track suits. <laughs> so we've got the purple, the yellow, that pink, which kind of went sort of a red color, that Tahitian teal, orange, a lighter pink, and then the black or red really dark gray. And then when you flip it, oh my god. I'm going to start far away and then I'm going to move it up to the camera so you can see like the quick sparkle. Look at the sparkle. Oh, the camera doesn't even know what to do with it. And here's a close up on the inside. You can see the glitter on the inside of the soap the best in this purple. But like I said, it's in all four of these layers. And then these are just regular colored. Okay. So the question of the day is, do you think we should do more glitter tops? I was thinking in the future, we might do like a pastel goth where we do pastel colors with a black and do a glitter top and maybe just do a pastel soap with a glitter top, like a unicorn cloud looking soap. Y'all will have to let me know. All you have to do to vote in the question of the day is click the I in the upper right hand corner of the screen. And I have to say, we're having not completely planned this out. I'm totally digging the colors. I think they go perfect together. Again, you got kind of that 80s dance party going on with the hollow top. I'm pretty sure 
Christine would approve. Also a thanks to one of the members of the royal court for sending me these gloves. He said they didn't fit him and that his company kept sending him the wrong size. They fit me perfectly and they grab onto my fingers and I'm so sick of gloves that are just flapping around. It makes embed placement so much more difficult. So thank you so much for sending them to me. I totally appreciate it. Dead. Dead. Okay also next time I should totally do more diagonal until it gets like all the way to the top and it can't even fit anymore. That would be so much fun. I hope you guys enjoyed today's video and this 80s glam retro hollow looking awesome Christine soap that I made today. If you are, be sure to give this video a big thumbs up and hey, subscribe to the channel. Leave me a comment down below and that's gonna enter you to win the hollow taco and one of the bars that we made today. Also be sure to subscribe to Simply Nail Logical because she's really fun and she's really funny. She's a really good pick me up for a bad day. Be sure you do something fun for yourself today, whether that is going and painting your nails. It has actually been like almost a whole year since I've painted my nails. So I went for a very edgy black with her linear hollow taco. It's just, oh, it's so pretty. Or maybe getting your nails professionally done. I can highly recommend dip powder. It lasts forever, especially for people that are like super hard on their nails. Either way, do something that makes you happy and I will see you all next time. So until then, bye for now. Oh, I gotta lean off the bed. Yeah.